I've had my hands on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra for a few weeks now, and I must say its battery life has been incredible. So today it's time for it to go head to head against of course its predecessor, as well as two other Snapdragon HN2 powered smartphones. And we can't forget about Huawei, Google, and Apple either in this extremely detailed 100 to 0% battery life drain test. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness level using a lux meter. They have all been updated to their latest available software updates. They're all SIM free and connected only to Wi-Fi. They'll all be running dynamic 120 Hertz refresh rates and they have all been set to their native resolutions. Does the latest Samsung flagship have what it takes to come out on top? And how do the other Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 run smartphones perform in this battery life drain test? This is Tech Nick and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things started, it's obviously worth checking out all phones are sitting at 100% battery life. They're all currently plugged in charge. And we are gonna be testing out their heat dissipation levels throughout this drain test. Clocked at every 30 minutes, those being the intervals. We're sitting at a room temperature of around 21.5 degrees in Celsius. Now, of course, at the start, they are all plugged in charge. So you can't really compare them in terms of heat share. But if you are interested, the OnePlus is the hottest while charging and the S23 Ultra is actually the coolest. Unplugging all devices here and hitting the start timer for on the right hand side just to let you guys know at the top right we have the time interval and that is in relation to the battery percentages above each device below the branding of each device and above each device is also the temperature which will change to interval and peak later on and that is also tied into the time interval at the top right hand corner when it comes to the first time interval, that being the 30 minute mark, we have 97% on the S23 Ultra, which is a percent ahead of its predecessor, 100% still on the Xiaomi 13 Pro and OnePlus 11, 98% on the Mate 50 Pro, 96 on the Pixel 7 Pro, and second to that of the Xiaomi and OnePlus is the iPhone with still 99%. At the bottom right hand corner, as you can see, I show the current app that is currently being used on all devices, and below each device, I have their specs if you are a tad bit rusty. After the one hour mark interval, we have 93% on the S23 Ultra, which is now 2% ahead of its predecessor. 100% still after an hour on the Xiaomi 13 Pro, which is super weird. 97% on the OnePlus, 93% on the Huawei, 91 on the Pixel, and 95 on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is once again only seconds to that of the Xiaomi and OnePlus. Usually the iPhone is on top, so it's pretty interesting to see that the Xiaomi is doing so well here. After an hour and a half, the Xiaomi is still on top with 92%. 88%, which is 4% behind the Xiaomi, is the S23 Ultra, but stick around because this gets very interesting later on. We have 84% now on the S22 Ultra, 4% behind its successor. 90% on the OnePlus 11, which is still second here, and now is tied with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and 89% on the Mate 50 Pro, and trailing the pack here is the Pixel 7 Pro with 82%. Now in my last battery drain test, the Pixel 7 Pro was set to Full HD, and it did pretty well, so it'll be interesting to see what it does this time around when it's set to QHD resolution. Like I said at the start of the test, all of them are set to their native resolution, so all of them are set to QHD plus resolution, except for the iPhone and the Huawei, which kind of sit between QHD and Full HD and you can't even change that on the iPhone at all. So they're all sitting at native and they all have LTPO 120 Hertz refresh rate panels, but the Huawei doesn't. The Huawei is sitting at a dynamic refresh rate, which fluctuates between 60 and 120 Hertz, whereas the rest of them can jump between one all the way up to 120 Hertz. That one really does save battery life, but the Pixel 7 Pro is sitting at an LTPO one refresh rate, which means it can only go as low as 10. And the Samsungs actually don't really go lower than 10, even though they're stated to go from one to 120. Nevertheless, hitting that three hour mark interval, we have 77% on the S23 Ultra, 72% on the S22 Ultra, which is 5% behind that, 78% on the Xiaomi 13 Pro, which is now on par with the OnePlus 11 and both of which are now trailing the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is sitting at the top with 80%. 74% quite impressive here, the Huawei Mate 50 Pro and 65% is the Pixel 7 Pro. Now it's really interesting over here considering all of them have very different sized battery cells. Well, some of them do. The Samsung, both Samsungs have 5,000 milliamp hour cells. The Xiaomi and the OnePlus and the Pixel also have very high capacity cells. The OnePlus and Pixel also have 5,000 milliamps to match the Samsung devices, while the Xiaomi is almost there at 4,820 milliamp hours. And we have the Huawei Mate 50 Pro 
being the lowest in terms of the Android devices here at 4,700 milliamp hours. And of course the iPhone is the lowest with 4,323 milliamp hours. And after the four hour mark interval, we have 70% on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which is now 8% ahead of its predecessor. 70% is the Xiaomi 13 Pro matching the S23 Ultra. And matching that as well is the OnePlus 11. Trailing a little bit behind that is the Mate 50 Pro. Trailing the whole pack here is the Pixel 7 Pro. And coming out on top is still the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, just to let you guys know, we are currently sitting on selfie video recording and though it is at 1080p 30fps, there is a very good reason for this and that is because all of my previous battery drain tests have been set to the same 1080p 30fps. So I try to keep them the same so that you can actually compare this battery drain test to all other battery drain tests done on my channel. So you can literally get the results from this, go watch my previous drain tests and you can compare them neck and neck there, which is great. But remember that you can't compare them with other channels since they use different apps, different brightness levels, so on and so forth. And now we're doing main video recording at 4K 30 FPS. Again, the same thing. All of them can hit 4K 60 FPS back recording, but we're keeping them the same so that you can compare them to other drain tests on my channel. And after five hours, we have 53% on the S23 Ultra, which is now 11% ahead of the S22 Ultra, 52% on the Xiaomi 13 Pro, 54% on the OnePlus 11, which is actually beating the Xiaomi and the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra now, 45% on the Mate 50 Pro, 32% on the Pixel 7 Pro already after five hours, and 57% on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which has now dipped by 10% to 47% after five hours and 30 minutes. The Pixel 7 Pro is now below the 25% mark, and we are running benchmarks, which is why they've all dropped so much and have hit such high temperatures. Xiaomi, I honestly thought it wouldn't get as hot with their Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset this time around, but we got almost 64 degrees Celsius off after running the first two benchmarks. Now I do run benchmarks for only one hour. So we do 10 minutes of Vantutu, then we do 20 minutes of 3D Mark Wildlife, and then we do 30 minutes of GFX Bench. This is not so that I can drain the phones quicker, but it's to simulate high performing games because I don't exactly have seven hands to play games on seven devices. We'll get to some simple games as you can see right now, but the Xiaomi hit a peak of 63.9 degrees in Celsius and the coolest here in terms of peak is the iPhone with 50.8 degrees in Celsius, but not far behind that is the S23 Ultra with a peak of 52.4 degrees in Celsius. So Samsung is staying quite cool this time around, which is good to see. After six and a half hours, we have 26% on the S23 Ultra, 17% on its predecessor, 16% now below the S22 Ultra is the Xiaomi 13 Pro, 26% on the OnePlus 11, which is seriously impressing me here, 19% on the Mate 50 Pro, 9% left on the Pixel 7 Pro, and we have 32% still on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is now 6% ahead of the S23 Ultra. It's gonna be really interesting to see which one comes out on top here. And after seven hours, we have just 2% left on the Google Pixel 7 Pro, which means it's gonna cap out any second now. And its predecessor reached almost seven hours and 40 minutes. Well, its previous test result did. So, and that was on Full HD. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Seven hours and eight minutes for the Google Pixel 7 Pro. And it had the hottest interval the last time out with 45.5 degrees in Celsius. And now it ends with a temperature of 44 degrees in Celsius. But I got a milliamp hour per minute reading of 11.682, which is not too bad. We'll have to see how much longer the other devices tend to go. And it looks like the S22 Ultra is gonna be next up. But before that seven hours, 30 minute mark, 1% left on the S22 Ultra, while we still have 16% left of juice in the tank on its successor over here. And getting to the seven hours and 31 minute mark, the S22 Ultra says cheers to us and its successor keeps on going with 16%, which is great. So we did have a slightly better milliamp hour per minute reading on the S22 Ultra as opposed to the Pixel 7 Pro, but they're both phones from last year and the Huawei Mate 50 Pro says cheers to us after seven hours and 39 minutes, which is really good for a Huawei device, not as good as the P50 Pro and the Mate 40 Pro before it. We'll get a bit on that a little bit later. Seven hours and 42 minutes for the Xiaomi 13 Pro. So it did beat the Mate 50 Pro as well as the S22 Ultra and Pixel 7 Pro. That is a very, very promising thing for Xiaomi over here. They're doing wonders with batteries and optimization thanks to the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. Now, something we have to speak about over here after eight hours, 11% on the S23 Ultra, the OnePlus is still at it with 9%, 13% on the 14 Pro Max. Very impressed by all three devices. They're all made podium spots over here. And I have to say that Samsung have actually told me that they've worked closely with Qualcomm on their Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 
for Galaxy chipset for optimization. And they've really put a lot in terms of optimizations, even though it has the same size battery cell as its predecessor, it's a lot more optimized, which is why it's lasting so much longer. Speaking about lasting longer, the OnePlus 11 has beat every single one of its predecessors in the past with eight hours and 29 minutes. Absolutely fantastic with less than 10 milliamp hours per minute of drain rating over here. Now we are nearing that nine hour mark interval and in the last interval, that being eight hours and 30 minutes, we have 5% left on the S23 Ultra, 7% on the iPhone, only 2% between them. This is the first time I've ever seen this between Samsung and iPhone and the Samsung just misses out here. Eight hours and 54 minutes. I got so excited over there that I actually bashed a bunch of phones, but they're okay. I must say they are definitely okay. And the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra got just over nine million hours per minute reading over here eight hours and 54 minutes almost nine hours hopefully we get that in the future the iphone is still going five percent after nine hours now i've always said five hours is good battery life six hours is great seven hours is superb eight hours is just insane and nine hours and plus is out of this world just like what the iphone did nine hours and 15 minutes but that is only 20 minutes longer lasting than the new S23 Ultra. I've never seen a gap so narrow between Apple and Samsung before when it comes to a battery drain test such as this. It's really good to see Samsung actually pull out all the cards this time around. Seventh place over here, we have the Pixel 7 Pro with seven hours and eight minutes. Not quite as good as the previous time I tested it out. Still fantastic for a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Over seven hours is great battery life. Now when it comes to sixth place, we have the S22 Ultra, which is actually an older device when compared to the Google and it's still got seven hours and 31 minutes, still beat the Pixel over here. Also the same 5,000 milliamp hour battery capacity. The Mate 50 Pro has a slightly smaller battery as opposed to sixth and seventh place and it placed fifth year with seven hours and 39 minutes with a 4,700 milliamp hour battery, which is superb. Now when it comes to fourth place, the Xiaomi 13 Pro, Xiaomi's are usually placed at the back of the pack. This time it placed fourth with seven hours and 42 minutes outshining the previous devices before it. Fantastic with 5,000 milliamp hours. Third place here, the OnePlus 11 seriously, seriously surprised me. Eight hours and 29 minutes, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. OnePlus have done wonders with their new flagship. Second place, the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I am very impressed by this guy. Almost nine hours, eight hours and 54 minutes, same size battery size as predecessor, 5,000 milliamp hours, but it couldn't quite match the iPhone 14 Pro Max with nine hours and 15 minutes. But in all fairness, that's only a 20 minute difference between them, so both of them are doing wonders when it comes to battery life. Now that the tests are done, it's time to quickly nitpick a couple things, starting with temperature over here. The hottest end temp was the OnePlus. The coolest end temp was the S23 Ultra, which is usually always the iPhone, so it's good to see that. But the coolest temp was the iPhone, and the hottest temp with almost 64 degrees in Celsius was the Xiaomi. Xiaomi haven't exactly improved heat dissipation much. Now when it comes to predecessor results, of course, the S23 Ultra absolutely destroyed its predecessor, almost lasting an extra hour and a half here. The Xiaomi 13 Pro, the same thing, lasting more than an hour as opposed to its predecessor. The OnePlus 11, I was actually impressed with the OnePlus 10 Pro getting over eight hours and this got eight and a half hours, which is great. The Mate 40 Pro in terms of Huawei got over nine hours and that was over two years ago and this time it got under eight hours. So that's slightly disappointing. And the Pixel 6 Pro got seven hours and 15 minutes, which is actually a little bit better than this time around. And the iPhone 13 Pro Max got nine and a half hours, just like the previous test I did with the 14 Pro Max. So they're sticking neck and neck, even though they're using a smaller battery. Now, if you pull your eyes a little bit up to check out the 5,000 milliamp hour at the bottom of each phone, if all of them were to have the same size cell. So of course the Xiaomi, the Huawei and the iPhone have just under 5,000 milliamp hours. So if we were to bring them up to 5,000 milliamp hours to match the rest of them, the Xiaomi would jump up to almost eight hours, but it would bump down to fifth place because the Huawei would go up because it had a better milliamp hour per minute drain reading. So it would go up to fourth with eight hours and eight minutes. And the iPhone would of course stay in first, but almost near 11 hours. So I really hope that this year, Apple will bring a much larger battery. That will be extremely exciting. So that's a wrap for the battery drain test today. I must say I'm seriously impressed by the S23 Ultra, which was just shy of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but because of its new optimizations, its new four Galaxy Snapdragon chipsets and all that jazz, it has done wonders this time around, especially when compared to its predecessor. Other Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones are a lot cooler than last time I tested out Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phone, so it's good to see them more optimized as well. And of course, all the devices are also keeping up and all of these devices got over seven hours of screen on time, which is fantastic. Let me know your thoughts on all these drain results over here. Make sure you go watch my previous drain test so that you can comment pair these with that as well. This is Technic and I'll catch you guys in the next one.